What's up guys? It's been a while since I picked up the camera and filmed anything, but it feels good to have the camera out. But right now it is January of 2024 and I figured, you know what? I should make a recap video, a summarized memory of my 2023 experience on YouTube and with this channel as it's pretty much been one year since I've started YouTube. But this gives me a perfect opportunity to look back and to see where I've been how I've grown, what I've learned, and all of those things, and to provide you guys some of the insights, the analytics, and all of those things about uh, content creation or being a YouTuber that other people don't really tell you or don't really show you. So this is gonna be a real, it's gonna be a, an honest video of my experience. But as you can see, this is my background here. I'm at a local place here, a local park that's right along the beach. I don't know if you guys can see the beach over there. The beach is absolutely beautiful today. The water is clear. Just the whole environment today is very nice going into dry season here. So uh, it's a very lovely time to be here right now. But anyways, uh, I don't want to ramble too much about where I am and stuff like that. This is a review video about 2023. The second channel I have here, yes, it's not my only channel if you don't know, but this channel I created on January 9th, 2023. And I made the first upload on January 11th, 2023. So just two days after creating it. And the whole point of it, if you don't know, was really to experiment, to see how the growth is with this versus my other one. So I was really experimenting to see, does YouTube like it better when it is a newer channel? And the answer to that is absolutely yes, 100%. So I created this channel in January, and then I started making videos as consistently as I could. I was actually living in Thailand from November to about May of 2023. So just about six months from 2022 to 2023. I was living in Bangkok and that's where it all began, right? So in the beginning of the year, I did Thailand. Then I went over to Vietnam for a quick trip, came back to Thailand, traveled to a couple different destinations in Thailand, then decided to travel to Malaysia for the first time from Malaysia, went back to Thailand and really began to think, you know, I think it's time to maybe leave Thailand, go to other places and spend some time traveling and not just be located in Thailand most of uh, the year or for several months. So that's when I said, you know what, I will return back to Malaysia. I did a very nice long travel in Malaysia for, I think it was one month. Well, not that long, but it felt long uh, because I kind of touched on different corners of the whole entire country. And then I went to the Philippines for about a, a month. And then I took a little break for a couple months. I came here to Guam to hang with some family and chill out. And then I returned back to Southeast Asia and I went to Vietnam for a whole month. And then I took about two weeks and I went to South Korea in Japan without vlogging, without documenting it, just for a personal vacation and whatnot. And then after that, I finished it up with going to the Philippines again. And I stayed there for about a month. And then I came here to Guam again, where I am, to celebrate the holidays. So in 2023, I traveled to three new countries that I'd never been to before. One was Malaysia. Two, South Korea. And three, Japan. Now South Korea and Japan, I didn't document, as I already said. But Malaysia, I did document, and all the other countries were kind of repeats. But during 2023, uh, I did come here to Guam for the first time. Now I've been here two times, so it was a new territory. It's part of the U.S., so it was nice to explore a territory of the U.S. because I've never been to any territory of the U.S. other than different states. But in total, I took about 18 flights of 2023, which to some people might be a lot, some people not that much and 12 of them were solo by myself. So basically from the month of May, all the way throughout the year, I traveled solo. If we consider the countries I've been to in 2023 and like how many I've been to, I actually went to 11 countries in 2023. And many of those were re repeats, as I said. I just wanna talk about a little bit of the cities that I've been to, right? I visited um, the beach location of Pattaya or Pattaya, however you pronounce it, and an island there called Koh Samui. A very, very cool place that I would really like to go back to visit and see more of. I have been to Vietnam uh, three times, but two of those times were actually in 2023. My first time was in late 2022. And so last year when I went to Vietnam, I visited Hanoi in the north, and I also visited again Saigon. 
But also I went to Malaysia, right? And in Malaysia, I traveled to so many places. The first time I just visited Kuala Lumpur. And then I returned to Malaysia and did a whole trip from the north to the south and then all the way over to Borneo. So I visited places like Penang, Kuala Lumpur again, Malacca, Kota Baru, the Perhentian Islands. I also visited uh, Kota Kinabalu in, in Borneo. And then, you know, after Malaysia, I also did visit the Philippines again. And in the Philippines, I also still haven't really been anywhere. I just get stuck in Metro Manila for some reason. Um, because it's such a big city and there's so much to do. And then also, as I said, I went to South Korea and Japan, which I didn't film on this channel, but just to tell you, I did visit the capital Seoul and I did visit the southern city of Busan. And that was a fabulous travel for about one week. And then going over to Japan, I spent a week also visiting Kyoto and Osaka. And man, those places were also super, super cool. And then of course, I came here to Guam, like I said. I visited here now two times and I'm still exploring here. Uh, it's, it's not that big of an island compared to, you know, a country or something, right? But it does take a while to get around because there's a lot of terrain here and the island stretches kind of long, but uh, it's also good to be here. So yeah, that's just a little touch on uh, the places I've been in these different countries. I think I might need to change this location because uh, it is starting to sprinkle and I'm afraid I'm gonna get trapped. There's a little bit of a uh, cloud up here. It is insanely windy now. I don't know if this is gonna work. It is the next day here and uh, yesterday it started sprinkling a little bit. It didn't rain too much, but it just became very windy as I was trying to say. And so unfortunately because of how windy it was, I couldn't really find a good spot to set up the camera and I was on a little bit of a time crunch. So I decided just to end the video yesterday and continue the next day, which is today. Now the sun is very, very strong again today. All right guys, we're gonna jump right into the analytic side of things where I left off yesterday. So as I was saying, I made 118 long form uh, videos and I made 165 shorts. Now of those shorts, they're just really chopped up pieces from longer videos made into smaller digestible bits that people are looking for for just short content, right? To me, shorts are a good way to grow your audience to help bring more people in. And by that, I want to say, of all my shorts uh, collectively, I got 253,900 views, right? It's not that many views, to be honest. And of all those views, I brought in 571 subs. So it's pretty good. I actually grew my audience a little bit by posting shorts, which really were pretty effortlessly. Huh? They're very easy to make. They're very quick, right? And then the good thing about shorts is you can take them and post them on other platforms like Facebook and TikTok because they're one minute long or less and they're in vertical format and it's very simple. Of the 118 videos I made, I got a total view count of 334,200 views, which is actually pretty decent. It could be more, it could be less, depending on the things I did, the places I went, and the content and all of that, right? But I'm happy. For a first year of travel, I think it's decent, right? Of all those views, I got 4,129 subs, which is actually decent as well. I'm happy with it. It could be more, it could be less, just like the views, but it's somewhere to start. This is the first year. The second year should be exponential, right? From your first year. So Thailand, I made 41 videos. I made the most videos there because I was there for four months straight in the beginning of the year, which brought in 96,000 views collectively. Then I also traveled to Vietnam one time and then again later in the year, made 20 videos total there and got a combined view count of 15,000. Then I decided to travel to Malaysia for the first time, ended up visiting two times, and made a total of 27 videos with a combined view count of 135,000, which is actually very good. And that's really where I got my first taste of like travel vlogging and making videos and saying like, there's potential. And then I also went to the Philippines two times in 2023 and made 24 videos with a combined view count of 134,000, which is very similar to Malaysia. And lastly, I visited Guam two times, made six videos here total. This is really where I took a break most of the time, but got 14,000 views total. The next part of analytics that I really wanna break down so that way you guys kind of have an understanding is the viewership, right? The audience, where is my audience coming from? Because I think this is one of the, the most um, interesting things about the analytics side of YouTube, uh, no matter who the YouTuber is, who the person is, right? It's just really fascinating to see who are the people that are watching you where are they coming from and those sort of things, right? And I'll break this down with percentages, okay? So Malaysia, 
83% of my viewers are from Malaysia, which is a decent amount. I mean, it's almost a quarter, right? The second highest is the Philippines at 21%, so very close actually to Malaysia. As you can see, about half of my viewers are from Philippines and Malaysia, right? But then after the Philippines, number three is kind of surprising in a way, is the USA. 13% of my viewers are from the US, and I suppose that is either, you know, foreign nationals like Filipinos, Malaysians living in the US and wanting to know about their country, right? Um, through a foreigner's eyes or somebody that's traveling there or it is other people like myself Americans maybe that want to travel and they're looking for some information about another place so yeah the United States is number three which I didn't really expect but it makes sense now number four is a tie between three countries India United Kingdom and Canada and two percent of my viewers are shared from these countries here number five is Vietnam at 0.4% which just kind of blew my mind because I have made 20 videos in Vietnam in two different cities two different trips and still 0.4% of my viewers are from Vietnam but after going there for two different trips I have now realized why it's such a low number that is because the Vietnamese population they're not at a very high level of English speaking so they're not watching a lot of English content. They're watching content that's in their local language, right? And so the ones that have watched it are either putting on subtitles, maybe know a little bit of the language, and so on. But I kind of expected the uh, amount to be a little bit higher, but I was wrong. I had to stop editing so I can fix something that I messed up on. I wanted to say that the audience for Thailand was 12%, which makes sense because I had about 100,000 views total from all the videos from Thailand. So 12% from Thailand, and then the final percentage was 0.3%, just a little bit smaller than Vietnam from the people on Guam. And that wraps up the percentages of the audience and where everyone is coming from. And so with that said, I should say thank you uh, to all the viewers that have watched so far, especially there in Malaysia, there in the Philippines, because uh, these two countries are the two countries that really have helped my channel grow the most so far. Keeping on the topic of analytics, one thing I really want to mention the most about analytics is the growth, right? So from January to April is when I stayed in Thailand most of the time. I traveled to Vietnam once, traveled to Malaysia once, and also made a couple trips within Thailand, right? And so the growth is really based around those places, right? And then after that is really when I did more long travels. I went into solo travel. I traveled all of Malaysia by myself for an entire month. Did the Philippines for a month, but just stayed in Metro Manila, right? But then went back to Vietnam, went back to um, the Philippines again and stuff. So the growth actually has kind of uh, two different points, I think, right? And, but the biggest spike didn't come until I began to solo travel. And that's really when I, I went into Malaysia and I started making videos like every couple days. And I traveled for a whole month around the peninsula of Malaysia and then in Borneo. And that's really where I saw the most growth or the most growth so far in 2023. And then in the summertime, uh, July, August, September, I came here to Guam where I am now and I took a break. And so during that time, I was just posting some shorts. I was posting some videos that I hadn't posted yet. So I wasn't really making too many videos. I made just um, six videos, I think, during that time here. And so the channel wasn't really doing much. Um, there isn't a big audience here looking for YouTube content. So it was difficult to make content that was really uh, favorable to many people, right? So during that time, uh, the channel growth really slumped and didn't really do much, right? And then in at uh, the end of September, when I decided to go back to Vietnam, and then I went to the Philippines for the end of the year, that's where the channel really started to go even again, take off even more. It was the second experience of seeing some like sort of exponential growth, I guess. Even though I made so many videos again in Vietnam and I had a great time there for a month, the growth just wasn't really moving and in fact it made some really good videos on both of my channels and they didn't get really noticed and unfortunately that's what happens I think with Vietnamese content when you're in Vietnam making content unless you already have a big following you know 50,000 subscribers or something like that but it's alright because Vietnam is a country I have a lot of um, attachment to and I really love going there all right, so now that most of the analytics are out of the way, um, the only thing I'm really not going to talk about is 
money made on YouTube, right? Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give a specific dollar amount that I made because it's really nothing, to be honest. Now I could tell you that during 2023, I have spent 10 to 15 times more money than I have made on YouTube. And that is usually normal in the first year unless you're getting millions of views in your first year, right? Like I said, I only made 300 and something thousand views, so you're not gonna make much money. And to be honest, people that are just making money off of advertisements, it depends on each video, it depends on each creator, it depends on how much the ads or how long the ads are being watched for and stuff, right? But for instance, to give you kind of some ballpark number, if somebody's getting 50,000 views on each video, right? They might be making something like $100 a month. Um, it really depends on how long the video is, how many ads are in it, how long they're being watched, like I said, right? So you can make money as a small YouTuber, as a small content creator with just ads, right? For most of the year from May to December, I tracked majority of my spendings. I tracked flights, I tracked hotels, um, Airbnbs, hostels, like those things. And I also tried to track uh, food. As, as much food as I can. Sometimes if I'm spending a lot of money on food, going to this place to eat, eating at the street food stall, eating here, eating there, I won't record everything so it's a little bit difficult. But I have a pretty good understanding for everything of what I've spent. So let's start off with flights, right? In 2023 of my solo travel, I took 12 flights, right? And of those 12 flights, I spent a total of $1,500, which is actually not so bad it's just in southeast asia pretty much so that's why it's a little bit cheaper i'm not going all the way across the world and whatnot which comes out to an average about uh, 125 dollars per flight so it's actually very very affordable and i'm always flying low cost airplanes i've never flown business i'm always uh, not choosing my seat i let the airline pick it for me because then i don't have to pay the extra 20 dollars or however much it is and then i also stayed at a lot of accommodations the total cost of all the accommodations i stayed at while solo traveling from may to december was one thousand seven hundred dollars very similar to my flight costs right this is for probably oh i don't know 140 days maybe of the year that i was staying in some other place uh, and not rent free right so for one thousand seven hundred dollars it comes out to an average nightly cost of somewhere around fourteen dollars is what i kind of figure right which is very reasonable because most of the time i have something i can use for cooking whether it is some sort of thing to actually cook meals or it's just a kettle right or a microwave but it's something and with a refrigerator and usually with a private bathroom as well because I prefer to rent a place that has a private bathroom. I'm not really into sharing a bathroom with other people because some people just do not have proper hygiene, right? And so that's one of the most important things for me. But of all these accommodations, right, I've only stayed at two hotels in 2023, one hostel, and 10 different Airbnbs. And let me tell you, the experience was wild. And I'll talk about it later in this video, but some of my worst travel experiences are because of accommodation. So accommodation is a very big gamble. And to be honest, if you have the money to spend, you have the bigger budget, you're better off to spend on a nicer place just to make your travel much more smooth. In parts of July, August, September, that time of the summertime, I didn't fly anywhere. So I wasn't spending money on flights, wasn't spending money on accommodation during that time. And then also in part of December of 2023, I wasn't flying anywhere and wasn't spending money on accommodation. So that's why my cost of accommodation flights is a little bit lower than maybe the average traveler. But All right, guys, I've come inside because I was absolutely getting roasted by that sun. It's pretty hot out. That's just how it is every day. As I said, I was actually getting a little bit of like a sunburn feeling and uh, yeah, I was being exposed too long, but back inside and I'm gonna finish off the video here. Now we're gonna jump into the travel costs of food, transportation, and things like that. So from May to June, when I visited Malaysia, uh, the Philippines of these two countries, I had a combined total of about $400 to $500 on food because I did a little bit of cooking. I stayed in some apartments, some places where I was able to cook some things. So I wasn't always eating out, right? But generally I did eat out a lot. I ate out so much in Malaysia. Um, the food there is so good. One of the best cuisines in the world. So in Malaysia, your monthly budget of food is actually gonna be quite good compared to maybe some other countries around the world, right? 
And so that's why I only spent 400 to $500. Now that's an, an estimate because during that time I wasn't tracking food. I could just remember off of the top of my head how much I was spending each day, which wasn't that much, right, per day. And so that's how I got that number, right? Of May to June, and actually for all of the year, um, I really didn't do many excursions. The only excursions I did were in Malaysia. Um, I paid a total of $26 to do excursions. That was going up some hill in Penang, taking some funicular car, um, a snorkeling trip in the Perhentian Islands in Malaysia, and really that's it. I didn't do any more excursions. Even when I went to the Philippines, no excursions. Because when I'm traveling solo, I don't really do them and I'd rather do them with other people, so that's why I didn't do them. But then uh, transportation from May to June, all of Malaysia, all of the Philippines, was about $125. Now that's mainly using Grab, uh, using Uber applications like that, sometimes moto taxis, uh, sometimes regular taxis, and then you know if I can navigate the bus or if I can navigate the train system or the public transport system, transport system wherever I am. So I spent $125 for two months, which is also uh, probably pretty cheap um, compared to some other places, right? So that's May to June. I took a break in part of June, July, August, September. And then in September, I returned to Southeast Asia, traveled in Vietnam for a whole month, and then in Vietnam, right? The food is so cheap there, but I spent $175 on food for the month in Vietnam. 175 for one month. It's so crazy because I've heard of people like in New York, in the US, spending $2,000 on food for a month, uh, which is insane, right? But yeah, in Vietnam, you can eat for cheap, and the food is just phenomenal. It's so good. One of my favorite cuisines as well. And then transportation for Vietnam in uh, just that month, $10. I only did two grab cars. I didn't take any moto taxis. I didn't do anything else. I just walked the entire city. Like some days I was walking 20,000 steps plus. So I definitely spent very little money on transportation in my time in Vietnam. Uh, after Vietnam, I went to South Korea and Japan for two weeks, which I'm not including any sort of costs, which those costs are much higher, but I was traveling with other people, so it wasn't necessarily um, solo costs, right? But then after South Korea and Japan, I flew uh, to the Philippines with, what airline did I fly? Cebu Pacific, I think, actually, first airline I ever, first time I ever flew with that airline, which was a really nice one. So I stayed in uh, the Philippines for all of November, and I spent a total of $200 or so on food there. Now, I actually didn't record all the food costs um, for that month. I just kind of estimated it based on the spendings on my card and ATM withdrawals and things like that. But I will say, when I was in the Philippines for the end of the year, if you watch some of the videos, I wasn't eating a whole lot of food, right? Because it was the end of the year. I knew this was the last time I was gonna travel for the year, so I knew that I used up most of my expenses for traveling and that I needed to be careful on how much money I spent uh, during my time in the Philippines, right? And so I used most of my budget actually for accommodation and also for getting around the city. So I spent $60 on transportation, which actually isn't so bad. I was using a lot of moto taxis and some grab cars and stuff like that. I didn't use the public transport system once, which next time I go, I will probably use it. But I just stayed in Metro Manila, so that's why the costs are what they are, you know? But now, let's jump into uh, what I have learned throughout the year of 2023, being a YouTuber and, you know, making videos for a year successfully, right? Uh, because it's some sort of success for me, even if I didn't make a profit. All right, the number one thing I've learned uh, in 2023, traveling is going with all the stuff I just said, is that Travel is expensive, it's not cheap. And during the pandemic when I was traveling and traveling a lot, I was like, wow, it's quite affordable, especially if you have a lenient job where you can work in, and live on the go, right? Like um, working online or being a digital nomad, it's very simple. But today you need to have a higher income to afford traveling so often. And in my opinion, slow travel works better. So staying somewhere for one month, maybe multiple months if you can, uh, legally, of course, with proper visas and whatnot, is the best way to go because then you can fully enjoy a place and fully deep dive it and uh, not have to have too high of cost because you get better deals like on accommodation and stuff. And you can book ahead of time rather than just booking every week because you're moving so quickly. 
And the other thing is that solo travel just isn't that fun, as I already mentioned. Um, I did a lot of solo travel in 2023, as well as 2022, as I mentioned. And the older you get, I think, maybe the less sometimes you want to solo travel when you're young. It's very fun because you can meet so many people and you might be a little bit more outgoing. But for me, I enjoy traveling with other people. That's for sure, um, more than solo travel. But I will still solo travel, just maybe not as frequent. The next one is that quality content takes a lot of time. I've mentioned this before, but you know, when I first started YouTube, I was like, oh, I could just make a video today. I can edit it today. I can upload it. It's going to be a great video, right? That doesn't happen. Sometimes it can happen, of course, right? But good content, you need to put in the work. You need to put in the time behind the video, you know, planning and all of that stuff. Good, good content takes some time. So even if it takes five days to make a video and upload it and get it all done and ready, right? So be it. But if you want to have very good videos, you need to put in the time, right? And that's what I need to do. I need to work on it a little bit more. I need to plan better and make my videos better. So that means not making them every day or making them every couple days. I need to really think about it. But of course, I'll still do some videos every day or every other day and you know kind of just make them quick because those are also good raw videos you know a lot of people like them and then that leads me into the next point is that I realized with travel vlogging and YouTubing that what the audience likes most is people who are genuine you know people who are themselves um, they don't show off this personality or try to portray as other people which I've seen a lot of content creators doing this especially in Southeast Asia so many people copy people it's all right to copy like a video idea, but you don't need to do all the same things, right? And we need to be original. So I try to stay original. I may seem very like uh, laid back and very quiet sometimes in videos, but that's kind of who I am, to be honest. I'm not very outspoken. I'm not very um, extroverted. This is just who I am. Uh, so I, I try to keep it that way, right? So the other things I want to say, just a couple more, and this has to do with the analytics side that I've already talked about is that growing on YouTube, right? I watch a lot of YouTube, okay? But there's a lot of people that I don't necessarily watch, but I check on them here and there because that's what you need to do. You need to do research as a YouTuber, uh, as a travel content creator or a vlogger, and you need to see what's happening, right? And you need to watch the trends and things like this because you can learn a lot and you can learn how to successfully grow. I believe I have all the input to properly do it right and to uh, grow but I don't grow as fast as I should because there are things that I'm holding myself back, such as interacting with people. Sometimes I just don't, I don't like putting the camera in people's face, but I need to interact more, I know. You guys wanna see it, I'll be doing it more in the future. You have to adjust to it, right? And that's what I'm doing, I'm adjusting slowly, right? But uh, the thing I've learned is that growth is really dependent on where you go. So Malaysia and the Philippines, those are two of the best countries in Southeast Asia to grow very fast. So if you do want to grow fast, go to those countries. If you don't, go to Vietnam. You probably won't grow so fast as I've showed you my statistics or my analytics from there. You kind of need to bring a following with you unless you just are a viral hit or you're a viral creator and you can just do it right the first time, you know, then it will work. But the same goes for different countries and whatnot. But you can go to the places that have the highest growth for the best success and you will grow fast, right? Or you can truly just travel and enjoy yourself like I do. I go to Vietnam because I just love traveling there. I go to these other places because I love traveling there and I come here to Guam where I am to see some family because I enjoy it, right? So sometimes you need to sacrifice the growth to enjoy the things for yourself, right? And that's one of the most important things that I've learned in 2023. Now the most important thing I want to talk about today or that I want to express and I want to wrap this video up with is my experience of traveling in 2023 to all the countries, the destinations, the places, the experiences, right? Let's talk about the best and let's talk about the worst because I'm sure you guys are interested to hear about this. So I've had some really good experiences and some kind of bad experiences in multiple countries, right? Uh, Let's just say Malaysia, I think, was maybe the best country I traveled to this year in terms of growth and experience and food and culture. And same thing with the Philippines. Malaysia and the Philippines are right there and you can see it with the views, with the analytics and all that. And it's hard to say which one is more, right? And actually, Malaysia was the most shocking to me too because I never knew anyone that went to Malaysia. So I just went there and was like, I'm gonna try it. And it turned out to be 
a perfect destination, you know. I went to the Philippines already uh, five years ago. Yeah, five years ago I went to the Philippines. So I already knew about the Philippines, but I knew nothing about Malaysia. And so to me, I think that's why Malaysia just stood out the most as the best experience overall. And so when I went to Malaysia, uh, the best experience I had in Malaysia actually was in Penang because Penang has some of the best cuisine. You have a mix of Chinese, Indian, and Malay. The food is so good there, so I really loved my time there. Next was in the Perhentian Islands, visiting the islands off of the coast of Eastern Malaysia. And I believe these islands were just some of the most beautiful islands I've ever seen in my life. Super beautiful. But the islands in Malaysia, my God, were so amazing. And I hope to go back there because they're still like kind of untouched feeling, you know, very different than maybe some islands all around Southeast Asia. So if you are looking for a very nice island to visit, I recommend them. And then I do want to mention uh, the Philippines, of course, because the culture in the Philippines is just unbelievable. The hospitality, as everyone always says, during my trips to the Philippines, the hospitality has always been top notch and I just have really, really loved it. So my time in the Philippines is always good. But like I said before, um, I need to get away from the big cities and go to the smaller cities, the smaller beach towns and coastal towns, mountain towns, and I think I'm going to have a very, very good time in the Philippines in the future. So that's why I will be coming back, hopefully very soon. But other than that, I want to mention South Korea and Japan because these two countries blew my mind away, even though I didn't make videos about them. So uh, they are some of my best travel experiences so far, and I'm definitely going to go back. And then Vietnam, as I've said, also uh, just an amazing experience. The food is my best experience in Vietnam, I think. Um, it's hard to connect with the culture or with the people because they don't speak English, but the food is just so amazing. And that's what keeps bringing me back there every time. Plus the cost. It's just very affordable to be in Vietnam, to travel there, travel around it, to stay there. Everything is very, very affordable. Okay, worst travel experiences. I don't like to talk about worst travel experiences because it's a really negative thing, but it happens in travel, right? My worst travel experience in 2023 was actually in Vietnam. Um, and that was just due to accommodation. Uh, when I first arrived in Saigon in the south, uh, the accommodation I was supposed to stay at had a bunch of construction near it. It was so noisy, uh, like really, really noisy. I've never heard construction that loud. And that's because the building they were constructing right next to it was literally less than a meter away and so it was just obnoxious i couldn't work couldn't sleep and uh, because of that i ended up moving to another airbnb on a short-term notice when i moved there that airbnb had mold had all sorts of problems and it just turned out to be a nightmare there for about a week and then i ended up moving again to another airbnb which ended up being a very nice airbnb but farther away from like where all the tourism is and it was just a very good time to be there because I felt like I was actually living with the locals and sometimes that happens though in travel you know you have bad accommodations you have bad travel experience these things happen but the good thing or the most important thing is to try to end on a good note and that's what happened when I was in Vietnam I ended on a good note I stayed at a better place and you know, just enjoyed a different area. It wasn't really around tourists anymore. I was really absorbing the local life. So it was one of my worst travel experiences, but that happens. And then also kind of uh, being in the Philippines for the second time or the third time, actually. Yeah, just recently I kind of had a bad experience and that had to do with accommodation. As I said in the past videos, wanted to stay in the BGC area, but the accommodation was limited because I booked it on a short notice as well. And I've noticed that in the Philippines, accommodation has been going much higher for short-term rent, like with Airbnb and hotels and things. So you have to really book in advance as things fill up very quickly. And when you're closer to the Christmas season, everyone's traveling there. So it's very difficult. But that was kind of a travel experience on my, on my mistake, I guess, right? Because I booked accommodation that wasn't too fitting. I was in the Pateros area, so it was a little bit farther away from BGC and I had to commute every day to get to BGC or Makati and stuff like that. So that wasn't such a nice experience, but I have learned now. So next time I go to Metro Manila, I know I can't stay in an area like that. I need to stay in an area that's more walkable and where there's more, you know, lively action, more tourists, more locals, and it's just, you know, 
overall a better atmosphere. And other than that, um, in terms of worst experiences, I actually don't think I had food poisoning in 2023, which is shocking because I had it in 2021, 2022 in Latin America many times. So that's a good thing. I didn't have any bad food experiences. Uh, the food I ate was always really good. I never had any real safety concerns traveling in Southeast Asia, which is also very good. Not like you do in uh, Central America or Latin America sometimes. And other than that, I had many good experiences, you know, with the people, meeting the people in the Philippines, meeting the people in Malaysia, um, experiencing Ramadan in Malaysia last year was just one of the most amazing things because you get to try food that is only offered during uh, a certain period of time in Malaysia. And the food in Malaysia is just incredible, right? Also in the Philippines, I didn't get to try so much local food. I tried some dishes, but of all the dishes I've had in the Philippines, uh, Filipino food isn't necessarily my favorite. It's actually tasty, to be honest, but it's definitely not the highest on my list, right? And there's nothing wrong with that because I think experience and I think culture and I think the people of the Philippines is what's the highest on the list, right? But overall in 2023, I had so many great experiences and you know, this journey of being on YouTube is just, it's amazing. Um, I didn't expect to have some of the results I had, and I also didn't expect to have such a good community, you know? There are a lot of trolls on YouTube, and sometimes I enjoy, um, you know, giving them a little something back, but sometimes I gotta try not to do that. But overall, I mean, the community on YouTube, the people who comment, you guys, the viewers, the interactors, uh, it's one of the best. It's one of the things that keeps me going. And even all the people that watch the videos and don't interact because they might be introverted, no problem, uh, it's okay. But I'm thankful for all of you guys for watching the videos, for supporting, um, definitely give me motivation to keep going. And I really hope uh, I'm gonna be able to take this 2023 experience, put it into this year, 2024 and so on, and really do better and do bigger, right? Because. There is a lot to see in this world and I barely even scratched the surface. I'm at about 20 something countries, a little bit more than 20. And I really want to visit some new places. All right guys, well, uh, if you have made it this far in the 2023 recap video of the channel, the first year on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for interacting, uh, subscribing. And if you are new to this video, uh, welcome. And thank you for watching the video and thank you for your time, thank you for supporting, and there's a lot to come. So um, yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long, and I'll see you guys soon, hopefully from a new destination, or maybe I'll make some videos from where I am here and show you what a territory of the US is like and really uh, show you more things about it because it is a very beautiful destination here in the Pacific, but yeah. All right guys. Uh, take care, have a good 2024 as it's already started, and yeah, keep being awesome because I appreciate every one of you. Peace. Here, there's some fish in there. You can see some fish down there moving around, like koi fish and maybe some tilapia or carp or something. I'm not really sure what it is. They have like a little solar panel in the middle, some banana plantations. They're doing some construction in the horizon but it seems like it's like a cafe restaurant and they live maybe next to it. It's a really, really cool place. Oh my God, you're so strong. You gonna chew that or what? Oh my God. Ah, this one's... Oh, they're fighting! Oh, they're fighting! Oh my god. Wow, I think we created a war. Alright, here's the bathroom tour on this train. It's really bad, so I'm gonna try to make it quick. Here we got a western toilet, we got the bidet. Not sure if it works, I'm not touching anything. It's pretty nasty in here. No toilet paper, out of luck. Sink, there's some water so it must work. There's a mirror, there's an LED light, there's a window, they should open it more. It smells so fucking terrible in here, like piss.
gotta get out of here. Without a doubt in my mind, this is definitely Bangkok's cheapest train to go across the river. Oh, corn? Yes, this corn. What's this one? This is Kaladi. Eh, Katira, Katira. Yeah, this special special drink. One month, this one, Ramadan. Oh, special for this yes. month. Okay, this one. Yes, Katira. Okay, I'll have one. Okay, please. Let's try. Oh my god. Uh, that's so delicious. Okay, definitely chicken, but I don't know what part of it. Let's dip it in here. Gave me a lot of sauce. That's a lot. Okay, we dip it in there like that and we'll try it out. Oh my god. Mmm. This is. This is a fish. Fish. Fish and coconut. We mix. Ah. Oh. Any? Any. Any. Yeah. How do I eat it? Okay. Open? Oh, you, you take it. Yeah, yeah. Just stick it. Pull it out? Uh, yeah, pull it out. Just stick it. Good. It says 13 ringgit and it is fully loaded. Some rice, some onion, potato. Mm. Wow. So much flavor. Holy crap. Funny, everyone's wearing the home jersey, but it's Hello. the only one I got. Hello. 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 Oh, Manchester United. Oh, yes. Manchester United. oh, I almost broke my Where foot. Where are you from? I'm from the United States. United States. Wow, US. USA. Yes. Yeah. The land of the crazy. <laughs> I want to go to America. One day. One day. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Okay. American Coca Cola. Nice and fresh. Okay. You know, we so say yours. cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Man, skating here on the island, like I said, is no joke. That's why most people skate in the evening. I'm I drank a whole bottle of water while skating, a whole thing of Gatorade. I've totally sweat out everything out of my body. It's time to go get refueled. All right, number five is that the tourist zone, like I just talked about, is super developed. It is super 
perfect looking, right? Because the goal is to make the area where the tourists go look perfect. Tomorrow come back. Tomorrow. Uh, maybe. Not like the long grain rice. All right, let's try this meat. Oh, the bone. Almost, almost killed myself with that bone. Okay, here we go. Potato. Very yummy. The man that was sitting here, he uh, gave me a, a potato. I think it's like a like a Japanese purple potato. It's very sweet. Super, super delicious. Wow. He just had it on his motorbike and he said, Here, for you. Good for your stomach. Very tasty. But this is really cool. With all the Christmas lights you can see, it's very well lit up for Christmas. I really like it. But before I ever came here to the Philippines during Christmas time, before anyone ever commented on my videos and told me about Christmas time here in the Philippines, I would have never thought that the Christmas is this well decorated. It is truly amazing. So as you guys can see behind me, even these trees here are lit up with all the lights. When it comes to Christmas decorations, that's one of my favorite things. I love it when cities or different places just light up the trees with lights. It looks so cool how it aligns the road. And this road here on Burgo Circle, they do that. But here comes a GTR, look at this. I got that GTR right there, that gray, like gunmetal looking one. Holy crap, that thing is loud. Flight's right there. It's time to go. I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace. <laughs> Journey. I'm going to bed.